Hey everybody, it's Robert with the Secret Wine Society. Happy Easter. Uh, today I thought I'd give you a tour of the shell, see if we can find any Easter eggs. So, right hand side, a lot of you guys are familiar with how we have the shelves laid out. We don't put a lot of signage on them because we want you to ask us. So anyway, starting here we got a lot of local wines. Uh, some of the names, you're familiar with these. We really like uh, what Brian Berg's doing over there. This Converse Tremina, of course, is amazing. We've got some names you might not recognize, like Simple Machine. These guys are from the Rogue Valley. Uh, a lot of Rhone-style blends. Got a Rhone white hiding in the corner back there. Sometimes, you know, you gotta get them out and let the bottle shine a little bit. So that's actually a really nice bottle, and nobody picks it up. The label's pretty simple, but I like this wine, actually. So. Down this way, you've got some Gamay Noir. This is a really nice wine, actually. So this is Nosman's. Um, really nice people, by the way. But this Gamay Noir is fantastic. Really nice with uh, aged goat cheese, in my opinion. Gamay Noir is going to be great for Oregon. You're going to see a lot more really good examples coming out. Uh, Spangler, of course, is Petit Syrah is amazing. The Claret. And I've got the 2015 uh, Cap Franc coming in, which is outstanding. Uh, up this way, we've got some Pinot Noirs. Um, Maison Roy, I don't, probably haven't had these. These guys are Willamette Valley. The Petite Incline is drinking great right now, 2016. They do have some higher end stuff. I've got some others, other bottlings from these guys coming in. Good fellow. This guy is doing some really good work on their Willamette Valley. Now, this is his base bottling uh, Willamette Valley Pinot Noir. This is drinking really, really nice. Just a really good Pinot for the money. That runs about 22. That's a great smoking deal. This Durant Vineyard, this is one of the old, oldest Pinot Noir vineyards in the state. This is just really nice. It's kind of um, well delineated. It's almost like laser-like how he's machined in all of these different, like say the acidity, the, the spice, and all these parts are just machined in. It's a really cool wine. I would contrast that with uh, St. Innocent. I, don't, I wouldn't call these rustic, but they're more like a French style. This Montazi is absolutely out of this world. So yeah, you can visit Mark and everybody just south of Salem, but love Montazi. Now the temperature is really cool too. I mean, there's so much nice smoke on the nose, really beautiful wine. And of course, Shea is just outstanding as well. So a lot of other things hiding up here. Now this one, you know, it's top shelf, and we're not talking about top shelf price. That's $17. This is, uh, see, it says here, State Line Red, and this is Walla Walla Fruit. This is actually really nice red for the money. That's outstanding. So some of those things, you got to reach for them, or that's why you ask us. Now, moving down, this little guy's kind of out of place on its own. It's the last bottle. This is actually um, a cider, a dry cider, and it's really, really nice. This is made by Simple Machine. It's the last bottle I've got. Um, fantastic. Uh, hiding behind there, you've got Pinot Blanc from St. Innocent. Now this is really, really good. Um, I wasn't a huge Pinot Blanc fan, but you know, it's hard to find good examples, but this is fantastic. Of course, uh, Lake Cole are known for their reds, but I think their whites are even better. This Chenin Blanc is delicious, 17 bucks. They also make a Semillon, which I keep selling out of, but that's really good too. That one runs about 16, 17. You know, we got some California up through here. Ridge, of course, if you guys have never had Ridge, you, you have to drink Ridge. The Pagani Ranch is my personal favorite. This wine is outstanding. Um, we're jumping around here. I'm gonna go back down here. This Four Lone Hope, I did a review on this one. This is a crazy blend. You've got some Chardonnay in there. I think they've got Verdeo and Riesling, but really good for wine for people that love Chardonnay, California Chardonnay, but it's got these other elements which give it kind of an interesting twist. Um, you guys probably know who Paul Hobbs is. If you don't, well, that's a $54 Chardonnay, but yeah, you're talking just really, really nice extra, like kind of something that you're not gonna drink very often, but you should drink at least once, one of those. Now we're getting into some of the foreign wines, which we have a lot of these. I just did a review on this guy. So if you're looking for it, it's hiding right here. This is that Greek Rosé, and it is absolutely outstanding. You're definitely going to want to try this if you're a Rosé fan. Love this wine so much. Everyone that's tried it is blown away by it. Um, this is the last bottle of Savatiano, and this is actually a Greek white. 
Now the distributor for this one pulled out of Oregon, so I don't know if I can get any more of this, but it's delicious. Now, Savatiana is the grape, old, they're old vines, um, so it's a white, and it's just a very, very nice wine for the money especially. I mean, you're talking $18, and it's a beautiful wine. Getting more into some of the other Greek wines. Starting to bring in some uh, Xeno Mavados, like this one. I did a review on this one a while back too. It's delicious, so for Pinot Noir fans who like something a little extra spicy, that's delicious. Uh, it's Malaguzia, Assyrtico, so um, Masaflero, Assyrtico, you're talking like some Greek whites. Got an Ayuritico hiding on the end, which is delicious. That's a red. Second shelf here, looks like, uh, of course, for your uh, Hungarian wine fans, uh, Tokaji, which is excellent. This also, this guy makes a, uh, a sparkling version of this, which is outstanding. I drank that with uh, Art and Joyce Red K and my wife on... New Year's Eve, and it was very popular. This one here is Blatina. Now, Blatina is the name of the grape. It's a red varietal from Bosnia. This has been very popular. Um, I push this wine a lot because I love it so much, and especially at that price. It's just a great wine for the money. Um, it's not super heavy bodied. It's kind of more than a Pinot, but it's just got great flavor and balance. Love that wine. They make a stone cuvee, which is out of uh, two different white grapes. I also do a review on this one. So 90% Zalavka and 10% Benna, so wine grapes you've never heard of. This is really good. Um, it's not too light, it's got good body to it, good flavor, stone fruits, delicious. This is a blend of red grapes from, I'll be doing a review on this one soon, but this is from Lebanon and it's delicious. So you're looking at Syrah, Sanso, Cab Sal, Tempranillo, Marcelon. So it's a nice, it's delicious, fruit forward. Uh, down here we've got some wines. These are from uh, Chile. That's a lot of stuff coming in from Chile now. This is a Tanat, very popular with the uh, Oregon uh, crowd over there at uh, Elkton. Bought me out of all of it so far, except for a couple, but that's high altitude Tanat and it's delicious. This is from uh, Bolivia. Up here, these are this is one of my favorite sections. You start getting into the high-end Riesling, some of these. This guy is awesome. And this guy, let me pull these down real quick because there's a very slight difference in these labels. And I'm going to show you. So, you know, the price will indicate a little bit, 39 versus 46. Well, if you look at the top, if you can see the one in my right hand, in red letters, very fine across the front, so it's Alto Raven. That means old vines. This is the one you want. Or you drink this one, and I'll take this one home, because this is awesome. So let's put these back. I'm gonna hide those Alto Ravens so nobody can find them. Just don't tell my wife. Um, okay, down this way. Not a huge fan of gimmicky labels, but this wine is delicious. Um, this is Bostardo, or Bastardo, I should say, not Bostardo. Bastardo. Uh, excellent. This is a great varietal. It's from Portugal. This usually goes into port, but identified by itself, this wine is delicious. This one's new. Um, this is a blend of white and red grapes from Spain, and this is absolutely lovely. I'm going to not say too much about this because I'm going to review this soon. It's lovely. Um, in this way, see this one. First of all, it's a killer label. I really like that label. I'm uh, kind of a sucker for yellow too. I don't know if it's done right. But this is an Albarino and it is not like most Albarinos. It's got really cool body to it and a lot of crazy flavors going on. I'm going to review this one too. But for somebody that doesn't want just the high acid, clean type of Albarino, but something a little more that really delivers. These wines are crazy. Like, I hesitate to recommend these to people because they're very different. But these Ultreas from Bierzo, and once you start drinking these from Mencia, we're gonna do a, probably a whole program on this guy. This is a Godello, which is like a lightsaber. This stuff will cut right through you, just the way it's vinified. It's just so, the, the flavors are just so pure and just scintillating and just crazy. We'll do a review on this one. Up here, these are the new arrivals from Chile. So this is Salso. 
This is 100% Sanso, and this, the nose on this thing is absolutely amazing. This one is Sanso en Pais. Um, this guy was a consultant geologist, that's why he's got the rock hammer here, but um, these wines are great. Really, these are brand new, and I love them both. This one especially, because I like crazy, fuliginous noses. Let's go back up here, we got a few more. Clemens Bush, now this guy does high level work. These are some GGs, so Grosses Gavex, which basically it's a crew vineyard. So the uh, Marienburg, which I actually had that last, what, two nights ago? Fantastic. This will teach you what Riesling can do. Let's go down this way a little bit. So, got, getting into the French section here. This is a nice little, this Les Ferrales. Now this is a Southern French. This is, so it's gonna be Corbiere region. It's very sunny down there, so this is going to be very rich and ripe. 70% uh, Grenache, 30% Syrah. This is delicious. It's not a complicated wine, but it's big and fruity and just good. Hiding under here, um, let's see, I have more of that because I plan on selling a lot of it. Got this little rosé from Clément, Montu Salon. This is really nice. That's a Pinot Noir from Loire Valley, Pinot Noir rosé. This though is the one this is i found this first and then i found this because this is so darn delicious so from the same area same producers this is savignon blanc and it is killer for that 21 bucks outrageous hiding down here now this is a really nice white burgundy macron chantre 100 chardonnay and this little this is your new buddy your house chardonnay this stuff it's not complicated but it's just so well done you get Really good concentration of fruit. They don't overdo the oak. It's just perfectly balanced. You know, like sometimes domestic ones, either they're too thin, they're trying to be too pure and just natural, and just not touch them or do much with them, or they overdo the barrel. Or if they have the barrel and they get the fruit, you know, that's fine, but there's too much barrel. But if they're too natural, then they don't have the concentration of fruit like this one does. But it's very good, especially for the money. I absolutely love that one. Now, Antidote, though, I loaded up on this because Everybody loves it. So this is uh, Ribeiro del Duero. Um, Ribeiro del Duero, actually. So 2018 Antidoto. This is a Tempranillo, and it's just so well balanced. Everybody loves this wine. One's about 27, worth every penny of that. Drinking delicious right now. Um, I'm gonna back up for a second. See what I've got hiding down here. Okay, so we got a couple neat things down here. Now this Botani, this is a Moscatel. Old vine, this wine is so aromatic and beautiful and just delicious. This would be something I'd be drinking right now when it starts to warm up. So it's a white, it's from Spain, and it's absolutely delicious. Robert Parker, the famous wine critic, said he would buy cases of this as wedding presents because it's so easy to love. And it's something you want to take for a group. If you took that to a party, everyone's going to love it and you're going to be popular. This is um, Chateau Clemens. This is from Fronton, which is southwest France. I love this bottle so much when I discovered it. Um, it's got 50% Negrette, which is a grape you don't see very often. 25 Syrah, 25 Cab Saw, but the Negrette gives it this nice dark licorice note in there. This is a really, really, really nice wine for the money. This is interesting. Um, I love this. The grape is called Baga. This is from Portugal. This is vinified, and they put this in amphora, so the clay tablets, and this is just so silky smooth. The texture on this is absolutely wonderful. Don't see that very often. They don't bring a lot of it into the country, so I'm going to grab that while it's still available, now that you know where it's hiding. All right, step over here. Let's move on a little bit. Some uh, Chinon Rosé. Looks like one left there. You definitely, I love Chinon Rosé. Um, anything from the Loire Valley is delicious, usually. Let's go down this way. Um, let's see. Somebody's going to snag this bottle eventually. This is a higher-end white Bordeaux. Passoc Lignon. And this is 2015, 80% Cab Sauv, or uh, Sauvignon Blanc, rather, and 20% Semillon. Absolutely stunning. This is like spring in a bottle. Now, this is a higher-end white Bordeaux but absolutely delicious. You need to try a high-end white Bordeaux once in your life. And then you would compare it to something like this. Now this is a lower-end white Bordeaux. 
and this has got 80% Savion Blanc, 20% Semillon. So you see, you know, we got the same proportions. This is a delicious wine, though. It doesn't have everything that this has. You know, you're paying up for that. Just there's so much more in there. You have to experience it to really understand it. But these are nice, easy drinkers, and they're not that expensive. So you know, if you want a nice white. They're going to be high acid, a little bit of creaminess from the semillon. I mean, these are really, really good bargains. And nobody picks them up because of the label. They don't really know what that means. You know, they don't give you a lot of information. You know, they start to put the grapes on there and everything, and that's fine. But, you know, people should drink more white Bordeaux. I love white Bordeaux. Coming on this way, this uh, Puy Fumé. Uh, this is 100% Savion Blanc. This is a new arrival. I love this label. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. But this is a delicious wine. So this just came in, 24 bucks. Um, this is approved by Katie DeBonis. She loved it, so that tells you all you need to know. Down this way, getting the stuff up. Oh, this guy hiding in the corner. I love this wine. This is Planeta. They're um, Italian. This is from Sicily. And this is uh, Fiano's the grape, and this is absolutely amazing. Fiano's a white grape. This is one of the best wine or white wine varietals i think coming out of italy is fiano but in the right hands this stuff is fantastic and if you guys been coming here a while you know that i'm really into italian wines especially italian white wines there's so much stuff coming out of italy right now this is one of my new personal favorites so this is called uh, um, capterato is the grape it's actually a white grape so this is sicilian this is just an awesome little bottle You've got to try it. It's got some Chardonnay-like qualities to it, but it's just different in the texture. It's just absolutely awesome. Love this bottle for something different. What else? You guys like... Uh... Well, here's one. Kerner. Now, this is an unusual varietal. So this is also from northern Italy. Kerner's a grape. This is delicious. Nice citrus on it. Nice acid. Just a beautiful wine. Um... This one has been really popular lately. Now, this one is called Vermentino. This is from Sardinia, and this is wonderful. I'm probably going to do another review on this, but I've sold a lot of it. It's got great body to it. It's uh, savory. It's got a lot of savory spices in it. It's one of those cases where the label actually tells you what's in it, and they're not wrong, right? So it says here, unfiltered, which we always like that. Um, sea salt, sage, basil, rosemary, cedar. I mean, it's all actually in there. I mean, when you read this and then you drink it, you're like, yeah, they nailed it. So it's awesome. The only thing I think that they said touch of fruit, but what I think they missed, it's not really a touch of fruit as much as it is like this honeyed layer, like underpinning everything. It's great. You got to try this one. Um, really nice, especially for people like a little more body in their white wines like I do. What else do we have? Oh, okay. So I've got a couple of, um, red wines. I've been big into these guys lately. This is uh, Mont Albera is the producer. So th these are two different red grapes. This is Rouquet. Rouquet is like, really, I did a review on this one, but Rouquet is very aromatic red varietal. Um, you think like really like flowers like rose petals, lilies, just really delicate flower petals. Uh, beautiful. And then spicy. So not too heavy body, but just a delicious wine. But when you put your nose in the glass, you can say, that's pretty amazing. You're gonna wanna smell it for a while. It's intoxicating. This is uh, Grignolino, and I'll probably do a review on this one, but Grignolino is another red grape. So these are both uh, Piedmont, by the way. Uh, so Grignolino de Asti, so Asti being the town in Piedmont, but this used to be the grape, uh, the red grape of the nobility. And Back then, the peasant strain Barbera. Well, now I've got Barberas like this one that are almost a hundred dollars, and Grignolino is running twenty-three. So you can get the wine of the nobility for a lot cheaper than the peasant wines nowadays. So I really love this, and you know why? You'll understand why the nobility drank it. The tannins are just so luxurious on it. Uh, really nice wine. Love this a lot. And we just got in. I don't know if you guys are following our Facebook. Um, on the Instagram, we just brought in a Grignolino, a sparkling Grignolino, and I can't wait to try it. So down here, last one, got a couple of things hiding in here. Uh, this Rabona, now this is the best Rabona that you can buy. Rabona is a white grape, this comes from Italy. Uh, 
this this just fantastic. This one is this Blanc de Morgay de la Salle. So this is a, an Italian varietal from Val d'Aos, which is northern Italy, up in the mountains. This is very, very high altitude, and the grape is called Prie. It's a white grape. And just the purity in this bottle is something to be experienced. It's like pure mountain stream minerals and just the clarity. Just, you have to try this one. It's different than anything you've ever had. I absolutely love it and this isn't easy to get I had to beg borrow and steal and then yeah steal I knocked these guys out and took a couple cases my wife distracted them so and not easy to get for you guys but we'll do what it takes up here this uh, a couple more so speaking of Val d'Aost this is a Nebbiolo from the same area now this is a high altitude Nebbiolo so you don't get the darker fruits but bright red fruits this is delicious and a very fun wine but a very different take on nebbiolo this is fantastic i love this bar met um over here for your sangiovese fans uh this petty rosso i kind of like this is a great little label you know i like this little birdie on there kind of contrast this there's a couple of them with birds on them i'm a big sucker for bird labels for some reason but it's another one up here but anyway this is a uh, uh sangiovese Okay, and it's going to tell us from Montalcino, but this stuff is just great. It's got this nice, funky Italian take on Sangiovese. I love this bottle. Let's see, what else? We're going to go and see if there's anything hiding underneath real quick for you guys, and then they'll wrap this video up. Uh, oh, that's where he's hiding all the goodies. I've got this Greco de Tufo, and this was up there, but Greco de Tufo is, that's a white grape varietal. Um, so Tufo is the area for that grape and that is a crew area that is delicious for the money i think that thing runs 21 and that's a steal uh, i've got a corvina you don't see that very often um got some etna rosso down here for those uh mount etna fans oh and i do have this left now this is probably the last bottle i have of this, this is for dico di metallica this is outstanding in fact i took a couple of these home my wife loves this too 21 bucks and that is outrageously good but it's hiding, so you ought to ask for it or whatever. This is a Petit Arvin. This is another uh, high altitude um, white grape varietal from Val d'Aost. So that's hiding. I'm waiting to deploy that once we get a little more room. Down here. Oh, well, look at that. So got some crazy stuff in here. So I'm loaded up on the Petit Rosa because that is so darn good. This is actually another Prie. Just like the other one I showed you up here in the white bottle. So this is another take on that. Uh, we've got a Rosese di Dolce Aqua. That's really nice. This is brand new. Got some Etna Bianco. So this is uh, Caricante. This is delicious. It tastes like, um, I don't know, like cream, uh, what I call that? Cream pasta. Yeah, custard cream. Thanks. Yeah, it's delicious. This uh, Chris Bay is really good. Now this is a completely different grape varietal altogether as well. So this is, this is a Biancalo di Mataro. So this is fantastic. This is a nice white grape varietal from Italy. Another one. Here's some stuff that I'm experimenting with. These are Nociolas. This is another. This is a high-end one though. So this is a Nociola from. Uh, it's a white grape varietal uh, from Italy as well. Another Nociola over here. Now you're noticing you're not recognizing a lot of these names. It's because I'm bringing in stuff that's very different for you guys. Oh, and one hiding in the corner, and it's also up on the shelf, but this is another Verdicchio, uh, Tenuto del Volino. Uh, this is fantastic. I love this bottle. It's another Verdicchio. It's a nice one to contrast with the Di Metallica. And a couple more. Oh, nope, got not that one. Let's try this one. Oh, the Ifrati is hiding here, so... This is another uh, Verdicchio. It's actually a biotype called uh, Turbiano. So it's very similar to Verdicchio, but this is from the Lugana area. I did a review on this one. It's absolutely stunning. Over here, I don't have very many of these, but this is a Sancerre, one of the best I've ever had. I think it retails around 32. Absolutely outstanding. I'm kind of saving that for the wine club. So if you like Sav Blanc or Sancerre, you might want to DM me because I, I can't get too much more of that. And let's check two more places. Yeah, we did that one. We did that one. All right, guys, I think we're about going to wrap it up here. 
see most of the stuff. That's about everything. I've got a few things hidden in other places. You're gonna to have to come into the shop and ask us about it though. So anyway, that's a quick tour. Uh, there's a lot of Easter eggs in here and I skipped a lot of bottles, obviously. I just picked out some of the stuff that's just lately I'm drinking uh, and all the really good stuff. If there's one or two of them. I might have them hidden for myself. So anyway, we'll see you in the wine shop. We'll be open Thursday at 12. I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye-bye.